Hello. Hello, hello. Testing. All right. So, uh, I want to look at this uh, challenge by uh, Bug Puck, uh, Bug POC. Uh, they released this challenge uh, a few, I think like a week or two ago. And uh, last week, uh, they released uh, the proof of concepts for it. And a few people won. Um, they, uh, I was able to get almost to the end of it, uh, but I didn't get the last part, the angular escape. Uh, I tried pretty much everything I could. And then uh, when the, the POCs came out, uh, I, I looked at a few, and it was it was something that I didn't even think about, to be honest. So I wanted to go over um, some of the uh, some of the techniques that were used um, in order to uh, get to that point, and then. I actually uh, posted a link on the chat uh, of my favorite uh, proof of concept, and I'll sh we'll go over it as well. Uh, but I thought it was very simple, and uh, it, w it was straight to the point. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you know, like uh, it took hours to come up with it, but the end result was uh, a really cool POC that uh, didn't require pretty much anything other than one script being loaded into the application. Uh, so yeah, I thought I thought it was cool. Uh, so the application is, is right here and is set up um, as a calculator. Uh, the calculator acts as a normal calculator would. Uh, you can add, uh, you can, uh, you know, numbers and then get the result. Now there's a few buttons here. You know, there's uh, delete, uh, there's uh, clearing, uh, there's, you know, your usual operators. Uh, there's uh, modulus right there and then there's the off button. If you click the off button, you know, it grays out a little bit. Uh, and so like, uh, you know, the, when, when the challenge first came out, uh, they only said that, you know, there was, uh, they, that you had to pop an XSS. There wasn't, you know, like uh, anything to go, uh, based on, um, later on the Twitter account, they released, uh, some hints that were, uh, that were useful in determining, you know, what, what route you had to take. Um, uh, but yeah, so the first thing that, that, that at least that I did, uh, right here, and let me clear this was pretty much just kind of inspect, you know, the, um, the whole, uh, the HTML of this page, uh, just because, you know, I, I always tend to do that when I'm, you know, testing actual applications. Uh, you always want to test, uh, for, uh, for any, for, for any kind of information that you can get from here. Uh, you know, here at least, uh, we have, we said this is the display container and it's got a, some information. And then, uh, this right here, you know, comma I, uh, this iframe right here, uh, they're using an iframe. Um, to pretty much um, do this right here, where it outputs uh, the body uh, of the display in there. So this is where the result is. Uh, and then right here, the input calculator is um, another container. Um, and we keep going here, and it has a few commands um, and all this other stuff right here. Uh, we see some uh, some functions being called. Some, uh, this is Angular. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of this uh, ng da uh, dash repeat and dash click. Uh, and then so uh, at this point, you know, like I said, there, there was that uh, that iframe that automatically kind of, you know, catches your eye. Um, and we can go to that as well. Uh, right here, uh, it, this is the dev tools. Uh, so if you go here uh, into the, uh, the, the debugger, uh, you'll be able to see everything that's being loaded, uh, all the JavaScript and other uh, resources as well will show up here. Uh, but for our case, uh, pretty much what uh, what we need to look at is this uh, the script.js, which is uh, the Angular file that we're given where the controllers are stored. Uh, and right here, you can see that there's two controllers. There's one that's called display controller uh, that doesn't uh, seem to do anything. And then there's uh, the uh, arithmetic uh, controller, uh, which controls pretty much all, all the operations. So addition, subtraction, you know, etc. Uh, is control all through here, uh, and then uh, and then eventually, uh, you know, you, you see that right here, uh, this uh, this controller set up, the scope is passed down to it. Uh, this is how uh, this is just some Angular uh, stuff right here. I didn't know a lot of Angular, so I had to uh, I had to look up a lot of it. Uh, but then then you start adding you know values to your scope, and uh, you see here you have operator last use equals false, equation equals uh, zero the as a string. Uh, is float is false is in it is true and is off is false and then you start noticing right here uh, some functions and these functions do uh, a whole bunch of things is what uh, give uh, the uh, 
is what gives the functionality to the calculator itself. Uh, so all these operations like uh, addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication, and division, they're all pretty much uh, being controlled from right here. Uh, so you have one uh, that concats the operator and it's a bunch of if statements. And then uh, all the functions uh, have this in common after they get done doing uh, everything that they need to do. Uh, this equation, this I mean, this uh, function is called this send equation. Uh, and it takes the current equation uh, and sends it uh, somewhere. Uh, and you'll see here, uh, this is the command function and it does a bunch of checks, a bunch of ifs and sets a few things if those uh, if statements uh, are false or true. Uh, and again, at the end of it, uh, it again sends this uh, send equation uh, and it passes again the uh, the current equation right there. Uh, the add decimal function, uh, again, just does a few things. And then um, we see that this function gets used again. Uh, so every time that, that, a, um, that a function is called at the end, it always updates that equation by, send, uh, by using the send equation function. Uh, the update current number, again, the same. Uh, goes through some if statements and then at the end calls the send equation uh, and then we have calculate uh, which again does something right here this is this is uh, pretty much uh, th this one was a little uh, interesting because it uses eval uh, so uh, I was hoping that maybe I could use that to uh, to run alert and I think uh, some of the POCs that I saw did eventually do that uh, but I just uh, wasn't able to get there uh, the send equation again gets called and then we get to see what the send equation uh, actually does uh, it takes in a message and then uh, it does a post message to uh, this element uh, name that's called the iframe and he sends that message uh, then uh, right here pretty much what it does telling us is that there's a listener somewhere or that we're sending some sort of message to that iframe um, that is talking about and if we go back into the inspector I uh, will see that that uh, display uh, iframe that's being used to output the, the current number is uh, called the iframe. Uh, so, you know, we're going to target that uh, and that's being loaded right here from this source uh, from uh, frame.html. Uh, so we go back and then um, we can actually uh, just go to that page. So we go here and we go frame.html. We're going to see that uh, it's really simple. And if we inspect it, uh, we again um, see that it just has a zero right there uh, and it pulls in a script called frame.js uh, which is interesting um, right here we uh, inspect frame.js uh, it actually gives us a little answer to that post message that got sent earlier now uh, so this iframe actually uh, has an event listener um, set up right here that's listening for a message uh, and right here the receive message gets used right there uh, the receive message function gets used and this is what's going to happen with that message when it gets received um, and so this is the important part right here this is the very first uh, part of the challenge i guess uh, it's actually finding um, how to bypass this origin check uh, because if you if, if you don't pass that right there um, then you really can't do anything it returns uh, it does not it doesn't uh, allow you to send that message and and it is not it doesn't get received uh, but if you do bypass this then we come here and this is where it gets really interesting uh, this is where uh, message uh, this is where the message uh, ends up at that we sent earlier for, for using that post message uh, we receive that and we assign it to message and here if that message just has a string off uh, this happens uh, if the message is on then that happens and then uh, finally we get to this else if uh, that pretty much says that if uh, the message uh, includes uh, a single quote or if uh, and if the message uh, includes uh, ampersand uh, to discard it. Uh, so it looks at the message if it and if it has, you know, single quotes or if it has an ampersand is not going to allow it and uh, it'll just bail out right there and nothing will happen. Uh, otherwise, uh, if uh, it passes all these uh, this if statement, uh, it actually gets inserted into the page using inner HTML, uh, which should be a red flag for everybody. Uh, this inner HTML uh, is dangerous uh, and it just pretty much outputs whatever you pass it into it and turns it into HTML. Uh, so this is how you would uh, eventually, you know, like bypass that first, um, that origin check and then 
put something malicious in there um so yeah so let's uh we'll, we'll switch a little bit and then we'll talk about what actually gets passed here uh what message ends up being inside this uh this post message and how we can get it in there and what happens um so yeah let me see All right, um, so once we're here right now, uh, we're gonna see um, how can we bypass this origin check, which is pretty much what uh, is keeping us from doing anything uh, really interesting here, uh, because if we can't um, do that, then uh, we can't really do anything. So let's actually um, do something here. Uh, I'm gonna uh, pull up a rejects uh, tester, and we'll actually test these rejects, uh, which is what's protecting um, the post message uh, from coming from a rogue uh, origin, right? Uh, so let's actually grab um, grab this right here. And then let's copy it. Then let's put it here. Let's remove this. All right, and now let's play with it a little bit. Uh, we're gonna uh, try to figure out how to how to pretty much get this um, this specific rejects check uh, to be bypassed, and we'll use this uh, this rejects checker to do that. So, for example, uh, if we want to just test it real quick and see what it does uh, when we pass it HTTP uh, colon forward slash forward slash um, calc that buggy site dot com I'm supposed to match oh there it goes so uh, so this matches uh, so obviously uh, if we try to for example uh, use HTTP uh, google.com uh, that's not gonna match we can remove this and see that that doesn't match uh, but that does right uh, that um, that rejects is gonna reject anything that supposedly doesn't start with HTTP uses calc dot buggy website dot com uh, but what happened here is that these periods weren't um, weren't escaped, uh, so they're gonna actually uh, mean something to the rejects engine. In this instance, it says matches any character except for line terminators, uh, and the same thing here. Uh, so what happens is that I can remove this, and right now it's not gonna pass. But if I add literally any character here, like a number four, it actually becomes valid. Uh, and so now we can actually bypass that origin check uh, because of this rejects uh, and the fact that they're not escaping the periods. Uh, so I actually, before I even did did anything with the bug POC uh, POC generator, uh, I actually uh, went and bought a domain because uh, I didn't realize that you could do all this in the bug POC website, and it actually makes sense that you can. Uh, but anyways. Um, uh, I bought I bought this actually this exact domain and that's where I pretty much did my exploit. Uh, and so if I do um, let me see if I do cal seven. Uh, oh, it might not be on. Um, let me see. I have to boot up my server where we actually did it. So let me see. see and I'm just making sure that the servers on um, you see uh, this is popping already from the actual website that we needed to um, and it pops twice I think is the way I have it set up right now uh, I haven't really messed with it after uh, I found out how to do it uh, but yeah uh, so right here uh, the first thing that we can check is actually uh, 
the inspect element and right here you see that I, I actually have an iframe coming in and I'm loading up um, the calc that buggywebsite.com uh, for slash frame that HTML uh, which allows me to pretty much put it in an iframe and actually do some stuff with it right um, so the first thing that we can do right here is actually go into the debugger uh, and yep and right now it's pause uh, and, and right here you see uh, you can actually uh, load up the angular uh, JS and the frame.js which are the two files that you need uh, and the reason you can do you can do that and the, the reason that you have to do that is because to load anything you have to actually um, follow their CSP and their CSP is here in one of these tags I believe now right here so the content secure policy is set to script source uh, it allows unsafe eval uh, and you have to have scripts coming from the um, that same origin uh, and right here it says the object source is set to none and so pretty much what that means is that you have to use um, a script that has that was already loaded into the website uh, so that's why you see that right here we end up actually loading um, we actually ended up loading um, angular uh, and the um, and the frame uh, so right here uh, if I just clear all my points I can actually see the network and you see that angular right here and so coming back to us and then um, and then frame that JS is right there um, so pretty much what you end up doing here is you send a post message uh, and I can actually uh, show the POC right here uh, so you send a post message and you use an iframe and the iframe uh, you can use the source doc attribute to actually give it what you need the HTML structure to look like for the iframe and so right here we're pretty much preloading um, the scripts that we need and then we are actually creating uh, an ng application right here and uh, we're using um, eval straight from uh, the scope items that we have access to and uh, here this is where the actual POC comes from uh, from the blog that I posted on the chat uh, you use eval and then you use a the the object right here and two string two string constructor and then you use from char code uh, and this is all the ASCII representation of the actual payload that we send and then um, and then so yeah so you submit that as a post message and that's gonna get uh, that's gonna get consumed by the uh, by the actual uh, iframe and the XSS is then just placed on the page for you. Um, so if right here, we say okay, okay, and you saw the, and everybody saw that right here. So if we look at the actual uh, what's going on and what's actually getting you know ingested by the application, we see that um, that the arguments are right here. Uh, this is uh, the message that we're sending. And so it's going to go through all those steps and it's going to verify that that message is there that is coming from an origin that's trustworthy which in this case it does because we bypass that origin check um, and then it's going to continue to just process uh, everything that's right here and then eventually it's going to go uh, to here and you see the execution is going to actually happen if we keep going we submit uh, we continue and then we're here uh, we hit the first uh, the first one right here and it's coming from calc that buggy website dot com and we say okay and then we hit it again uh, again from the correct website um, and yeah so I mean you know in in general the hardest part was definitely that sandbox escape I, um, I, I, I didn't have enough time to do it and uh, and I feel like uh, like I learned a lot from just doing it uh, you know I didn't know a lot of uh, a lot of how post message works and how iframes work, and so it really helped me uh, to you know just uh, finally get through learning how those things work and how they communicate uh, on the web. And it was uh, it was a pretty cool experience. I wish I would have finished it, uh, but again, uh, shout out to everybody who did finish it. I think it was a really cool um, challenge, you know, and it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm I'm gonna. I'm going to try to finish the next one uh, if there is one. 
Um, but yeah, so uh, that's how you do it. Again, uh, you the first step is bypassing that origin check, and uh, and you can actually do it using a uh, bug POC. Uh, so if you go to a uh, bug POC right here, uh, let me see, I should be. Not sure if I remember my password. Let me see. Apparently, I forgot my password. Okay, uh, so we're pretty much going to do it. We're going to build it up um, how they wanted it. So you give it a title. Uh, we'll just call it iframe. And we'll call it challenge. Um, just an alert. And then, uh, I mean, I can pretty much just literally just grab what I did here. Grab it. And we're just gonna dump it in there. And then let's close this HTML tag. We can test it. Mm, okay, so this is uh where you go and you put, um, you can change this right here uh, to make it bypass that origin check that we we're talking about. You add calc dot buggy website dot com, and now you test it and you got it. Um, so yeah, it was it was really cool. Uh, it was pretty cool seeing this, uh, and I liked how easy it was to set up the PLC. Uh, you can again you can publish it and then um, you know you're pretty much given uh, this password and this POC ID and then you can share that with people and they'll be able to see your POC uh, so it was pretty cool uh, and yep that was it so like again uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it it was a fun challenge uh, and I learned a ton so y'all have a good night.